615. Welcome everyone in the room and in Zoom for the September 9th, 2024 Rochester Select Board meeting, which has been posted in three public places <clears throat> and on the website and emailed to interested parties, correct? So we're complying with the open meeting laws. And we're going to start off with the prior meeting minutes from the August 26th meeting. And I, um, I found those to be pretty concise and, and reflective of what happened. I'd move to approve those. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then <clears throat> we also have the minutes for the September 4th informational meeting um, about um, what to do with the high school building. And I had one correction, which <clears throat> Amy corrected me when I said that the building is currently in the hands of the supervisory union. It's actually the school board that owns the building. So I um, move to accept those minutes with that one correction. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Cool. <clears throat> and so on the um, new business, the um, first topic on the agenda is the bid that we have for the mowing contract. And then I see, Mason, you... Um, you shared with us this um, information about a, a robot mower. Is that something that you're suggesting would be a, a, a good solution to the town? Well, thank you for recognizing that. I had yep. left that. Um, it seems like we will be uh, voting yes on this bid because you need to. We solve need to the do it. Issue. But this is an interesting concept but, going forward. But from what I've been seeing <clears throat> nationally and everything else, uh, with the research and, and work that's twenty some years, that this contract is eighteen thousand potentially with a part time worker and a couple of uh, these. Uh, robotic mowers that you might be able to cut it in half, which would not only be cost effective for the community, but also lower our carbon footprint. But it seems like this contract is a one-year contract, is, is that correct? Three. 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 Three years. Three year contract. Well, even if <clears throat> the individual who is bidding may discover well, it'd that be they, interesting they to share this information make with, a, with, a pretty yeah. damn good profit <laughs> switching over within those three years mm -hmm. on, on mm -hmm. that contract. I didn't read this in depth, but the, what's the well, price? What's the price well, of one of those? The, uh, on the back there, the uh, this is a, yeah. on, on the other side, um, just just Google the oh, and you'll you'll see. What's going on nationally and everything else? You yeah, know. yeah. Uh, they're even playing with uh, snow removal now. That would be a little more challenging. But, yeah. But what I yeah no I think yeah. even even communicating with the individual who well that's may win I'm... this bid, they may turn out to be in a situation that uh, it's much more profitable for them to switch over. Hmm. Yeah, it would be worth sharing the information. With them, I don't think we can jump right on board with it at this moment. But it's um interesting concept. That would be interesting if the uh, the guy that is going to be doing the work would give him this information and see what he. It'd be interesting to see um, a contractor experiment with it before the town jumped in and, and spent the money. One on of the high end Husqvarna units is about thousand dollars and. And right now we have rider lawnmowers that are in the three thousand, four thousand mm -hmm. dollar range, you know, and so, you know, some of the high end uh, commercial units are in the four thousand. So it's becoming very cost effective, and uh, and just like the Roomba vacuum cleaner, you just set can set it loose on your on your park and let it just mow it's at its two starts. GPS coordinated. Yeah you know, organize and hmm. so they're doing it commercially in, in sports, you know, and everything else. Yeah. Susie, did you have a... Well, oh, there's one on the Bethel Mountain Road on the right side of the road. It's that little trailer that lost a good chunk of land in the fl last flood, hmm. and it's just a huge grassy area and then the little house. It's almost always empty, but they've got one just sitting out there and 
Sometimes I go over the mountain and it's doing its thing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have anything to run into. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, they program them so it's all... Every be, single tree. Be sure. pretty, yeah. Yeah. pretty tough to do the cemetery with it. I would yeah, imagine. that cemetery would be a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 You'd be very surprised. How long mean? about? How long is the charging on that? Like yeah. for oh, it's self, battery. It, it parks itself into its own charger and everything. Yeah, just like a Roomba, but like mine only goes for like so well, many. It, and then it all depends on. It doesn't finish the whole house, and so it, I can imagine like a yard. Yeah. It wouldn't. Uh, no, it's it's, um, it's a developing it's technology. Coming. That's yeah. basically yeah. what it is. It's, it's one of the faster ones, though, in yeah. the sense of how quickly it's switching over. Hmm. Well, so um, so we do have. It is a pretty significant chunk of money. Um, so the winter contract is nineteen thousand five hundred dollars per year to be paid in thirty two fifty per month for the winter contract. And the town is providing the salt and sand for use on the sidewalks. And the use of the old firehouse to store his equipment, which makes it much more practical. Um, uh, um, was that Martha? Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Um, did you already decide about the mowing contract? You've gone into uh, no. We're uh, we're no. talking about it right now. I'm the, just presenting what the what the bids are, just for the record. Okay. So what was I didn't hear what the bid was for the mowing contract or who it was to go to if it was approved. Well, I I, I kind of jumped to the winter contract because winter's coming. But um, it's eighteen thousand okay. dollars a year for the mowing, to be paid three thousand dollars a month. For the summer contract, mm -hmm. um, and this is from John Gorton at Four Seasons Property Management, who is the only one who submitted a bid for this. Um, so I have a one question about yeah. that. If the town elects to buy the school down there, I don't know as if this property is included in that. Oh, I was thinking. Uh, mm because then it'll become town property, mm -hmm. which will be responsible for that leach field area and the little the old little league field. Isn't that part of the That's, 97,000? Well, now it's been reduced to like 60,000 for... Um, the um, maintenance? Yeah. The, the, That's all included in that. That's included in that. Mm -hmm. The plowing isn't, though. We've never... We've always plowed that. Well, they yeah. said that it would be whatever the maintenance is, was, which... I heard her say mowing. They and said a lot of things. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, Jeff Gephardt does have his hand up. Yeah, Jeff. You want to unmute, Jeff? Yep. Um, well, I uh, a lot of the research Mason's done uh, on things. I'm not sure that I am aware of any uh, robotic mowers um, that could. Uh, do the variety of, of landscapes that uh, the town encompasses. However, I'm wondering if you have only one bidder on this, whether this is an opportunity to maybe negotiate with that bidder um, and convert to um, uh, elect battery electric equipment for the large mower that they no doubt plan to use. Um, I, you know, one of the problems with this is that people are pretty much on a three-year cycle getting, you know, the new equipment and then in three years they're sick and tired of fixing it. Um, with the electric battery operated mowers, um, the cost is all up front. Uh, there's really very few moving parts and pieces and uh, there are significant benefits in the reduction of car uh, carbon uh, into our atmosphere as well as just uh, reducing the amount of spills and the noise and everything else. So, uh, in this situation, I'm assuming that uh, Mr. Gordon did not include uh, or discuss um, battery electric equipment in his bid response, but if he's the only one, it would seem to give the board an opportunity to negotiate and discuss that further. Hmm. I know he may um, raise his price if we make those requirements. Who knows? Um, 
I, I suppose it would it would definitely be worth having a conversation with him and also exposing him to this idea. Maybe he just experiments with one of those if they're really so reasonable for for. A, but that's really his um, his prerogative. You know, I don't know what. Um, well, it, it might be a way. Important. For instance, uh, for instance, they might be enable. Um, restructuring the contract and have more of the money up front in order to acquire the equipment um, because he's going to have a lot less expense down the road um, without <coughs> purchase of gasoline and um, you know the, the uh, economics favor the battery electric equipment and it, there is good battery electric equipment out there we saw it uh, on the ball fields uh, three years ago now with the Mo Electric demonstration. Mm -hmm. I think part of the issue, Jeff, is labor costs more than the the petrol and all that. I, I think that's his biggest issue. He's trying to establish himself in the excavation process too, and he's doing uh, the lawns more as a side, and he's hired somebody to do them. So I think that's more of the issue with him. And being the only bid that we've had, I'm sure we can have conversations with him about looking at any new equipment that he wants to get and, and you know, try to get him to look at electric equipment. But I don't think that we can require it as far as going forward right now. One of the reasons why we put this out early was to have a, the contract figured out so going into the budget season so we could plan on uh, what we had to work with because his contract for the mowing is up and, and next <coughs> this winter is his last one on the snow removal. So we wanted to get it settled before. So that conversation would probably have to take place on a, on a, you know, just a normal conversation with him, not something that would be a negotiating factor at this point, I don't believe. Well, if his costs are, if he's going to be concerned primarily about labor, um, he will have less cost with the battery electric equipment because he'll have less maintenance and repair. I think it's more the hours that he looks at and the amount of mowing that he has to do for the town. I think that's the big issue with him. He spends mm -hmm. at least a, a two days a week, I think, just on town properties. And I think that's the, the bigger issue for him. But yeah, still, it's definitely worth and, um, and we can talk to him. I, I don't mind him, having but, a conversation but, with him. But I agree, it. sharing the information and recommendations to him versus trying to negotiate, forcing him into to that. I don't. I'm, I think we're pretty lucky that we've got someone that's willing to do the work. Do you have electric in the building, or did you did you reinstate it? You are in the fire station? No. No, I don't no. think so. That's just um, manual door. Yeah, the manual door. We um, last year we did turn it on for him so he could like oh, have so lights could, and stuff. Yeah. Um, the yeah. year before last we did that, and then he paid for it. He reimbursed mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, last year he didn't use. He didn't request it, so I yeah. never had it turned yeah. on. I know if he needs a block heater and a tractor right. or not. Yeah. Yep. yep. But it's definitely, um, this is a, a good area to um, dip our toes in, in the waters of, of trying to move over electric. I don't think we're going to be getting any town electric um, snowplow trucks anytime super soon, but it's hopefully coming. Um, so I'd, I'd um, anyone else have any input on this right now? Well, it's interesting here that He's hired, you know, he's hiring someone else to handle the mowing mm -hmm. within the town. And if he is looking at the robotic situation, you know, he may be cost effective to be able to hire um, a summertime uh, high school uh, senior type who Computer is Computer that can program yes. everything. Yep. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it can uh, be very cost effective yeah. that way for him. Yeah. All right, so I'd uh, move to award the uh, mowing contract to um, Four Seasons Property Management. 
I second that. And all in favor? All right. All right. And then I would move to award this snow removal bid to also Four Seasons Property Management. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Yep. And I would excuse also. Excuse me. <clears throat> yep. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I understand that the mowing contract is is three years, but did you say that mm -hmm. the snowing one was only one year? The snow removal one was only one. No, they're they're, one they're both they're both confused? three years. He, okay, so he that's has both one three more, years. In <clears throat> he has one more year on the existing contract, but because we're going into the okay. the, budget, the finance. budget and finance season, we're just putting it on the on the the burner so it's all in yeah. one one shot okay. so we know what's going and on so the mowing contract was eighteen thousand a year how much is the snow removal contract per year that is nineteen thousand five hundred dollars nineteen thousand five hundred per year okay mm -hmm. thank you very much sorry to interrupt yeah, you no, excuse me thank excuse you it's good to get it straight all right because <clears throat> winter is coming. Yeah, it is coming. So we also have here a request for no overnight parking sign down by the tennis courts. Does anyone have background on how this is? I, I walk my dog down there almost every morning, and I rarely see anyone park down there overnight, just tennis players. Just uh, people playing pickleball. Um, I don't recall, but I, I guess it has something to do with the event that the fire department put on there was somebody that was parked overnight um and they didn't have the room to set up for what they were going to set up for was it a base baseball i'm not even going there because i don't i don't, I don't think know. that we made like the fire department made a formal complaint i have i, mean, I don't it's know it's been on for a while now i don't even recall who brought it up i don't remember i don't remember that i mean it was there it was in the way but we didn't I mean, we may do, you know, like it was yeah, fine. Yeah. We didn't ever submit a formal complaint. I don't know where that came from. Not that I know of. Okay. Was it a car or a camper or what? Yep, it was a car. <coughs> yep, this year we had a car. Last year we had a camper. Yep. But we won't be doing the softball tournament anymore anyway as the fire department, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no overnight parking in other town areas. Right. If you want to consider that. Are those are those signage? Is there signage in those places? Well, well this here. is one. There is one here. Right. Yeah. Is there There's no parking around the park. Right, but that's just uh, ordinance. All the time. <laughs> that's an ordinance, right? That's an ordinance. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, we'll um, table table I, I would I would um, be inclined to just keep it and see if it really appears to be a problem because like I said um, I know both of us walk our dog down there right. very regularly and rarely see seeing, a car there yeah. unless yeah. it's somebody walking a dog too yeah <laughs> but really right, in the morning so I, I, I guess I'd table that that request but um that leads to the topic of the parking lot out here is that why you're here Susie <laughs> nope not you're just here to hang out and see the no, I'm here to ask some questions. Yeah. Well, go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, we've talked about this before, but um, I want to talk about it again, which is um, concerns about School Street. Um, so my first question is, um, as a, a resident of Rochester, what in general, what, if any, rules are there about me putting signs in my yard? Um, you know, signs such as, uh, you know, on Bethel Mountain Road, there's a couple of signs about pets or children or drive like your kid lives here, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, my, my concern continues to be that this is an incredibly dangerous road. The turn is a completely blind curve. When you oh this curve or you, coming I'm, coming no. coming from from Brook Street around this way it, in both directions mm -hmm. you cannot see what if anything is coming. 
There is now a young family with a toddler living on the corner. They're on the road at least five or six times a day in a wagon or mm -hmm. on foot. Um, this, to me, the simplest solution and, and easiest would be to put a, a sign up on each direction saying blind curb. Um, another possibility uh, is to put a speed limit sign up. It seems to have helped coming off the mountain uh, when it was changed to 25 up there. Um, a number of things all wrapped in one. Is it legal to park, park our cars, parallel park them on School Street? Is there an ordinance or a law or a rule? I don't think there's really room on school. On, on the, you can't park on the travel portion, for sure. Yeah. However, there are cars there a lot now. Um, and it's not, it's, there, there's no blame here. I'm just concerned, okay? I want to be really clear about that. Uh, a few weeks ago, two antique cars full of people who went to have lunch at the cafe parked on the side, the north side of the hardware store. Their car was there, cars were there for at least an hour and a half. Parked on Route 100 were pickup trucks, which makes people going north coming onto School Street entering on a blind. Mm -hmm. There was a car towards evening parked on the north side of School Street, people who were at the restaurant. There were people coming this way and coming that way. Nobody could see that there were parked cars on the road. So there's a lot of this going on. Mm -hmm. um, I know people need to park, but especially in the evenings when this place is empty, there's no reason for cars to be parking on the road. Maybe there needs to be just an informational announcement asking people not to park on the road or to put a sign up saying no parking. Um, in addition, Atlas is the two-year-old who's living on the road. Um, most people that come out of your shop riding a bike come around the park, come this way, shoot through the parking lot. They love this little hill mm -hmm. between my place and this place, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it's really dangerous. It's just, it's, it's, I don't understand why it can't be simply addressed. And, if there's something, I've spoken to each of the residents on School Street, they all have their concerns. The trucks are now driving over to Parsonage Lawn um, because the trucks keep getting bigger and mm -hmm. the road doesn't change. Um, you know, this road was not designed for the amount of traffic. There's been a lot of talk of making it one way, one way or the other. At this point, I think slight inconvenience is well worth the safety of our community members and visitors. People are walking their dogs here all the time. I mean, this is a really busy residential street. It's really the only mixed downtown street where there are families living surrounded by businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just how it's how it's evolved, and it will continue to evolve. But I really want to encourage the select board to more seriously consider the, the potential dangers of the road. I know nothing really bad has happened. There have been a few accidents. There's only been one accident since the trash changed over here. This last Saturday was a nightmare. It was completely an absurd idea to have all of that going on in one day. You know, the, the sheriff didn't show up until 9 or 9, you know, quite late. So there were people coming in all over the place. Um, somebody said something about that there was supposed to be, I think Dylan or Constable, they said no. they used the word Constable, but that there was some kind of mix up. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, just. 
I spend a lot of time on my porch. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't come to School Street to just sit and watch this because I find it entertaining. And now we have the big the big eighteen wheelers doing three point turns in the parking lot. It's it's busy. It's busy, yeah. but it doesn't have to be busy and and with no attempt at increasing the safety of it. And it's it seems to be, it is, in my perspective, something that people don't want to have to bother about. Well, and signage isn't going to fix the issue out here. It just isn't. Okay. And it's not a it's not a, a street where you're going to go. 40 miles an hour on. You may not go 40 miles an hour. I don't think anybody goes 40 miles You're an hour right. on this this street. Because you could sit there and, and rate them whatever you want to do, and they're not going 40 miles an hour, guaranteed. But I've always thought that this should be a one-way street. That's, I think that's right out by your house, that's down to the corner, because turning onto Route 100 is crazy. That is Dangerous. It's a dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. There's no question, and I totally agree with that. But putting more signage up isn't going to fix anything. Then why These do people that come in and decide to go out that way are nuts. I, I just don't even, when I come here, I come in that way and I drive out that way. Because that's, to me, it's to go out that way you're taking your life in your hands. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. If there's a truck parked at the hardware, yeah, you, you can't, can't see, see it. No. You <laughs> cannot see. And I totally agree with you on that. But putting up more signage isn't going to fix the problem. We really need to close that street off and make it one way. It really needs to be one way from your house over through. Where? But to do that, you'd have to put so many signs up. Signs. It, it would be nuts. You'd have probably, you'd have to do two sides of the road on your right by your house mm -hmm. to block that off. You'd have to do two more down by the hardware, and there's a pile of them down there right now. And after a while, nobody would would adhere to the signs anyway. And that's the biggest problem with signage. They just don't. They just ignore it after a while. Because there's no consequences of ignoring. Well, yeah, we don't have a constable that could arrest people, and and nor do we want to have that personally. But yeah, go ahead, Mason. Well, how about uh, a set of lights? At the at the intersection on no. on Route 100, right there, you got the grocery store across the way. No, no. Well, I understand what you're talking about. It's a blind spot. Yeah, yeah, no, not. But, but if signs no. don't work. Yeah. The traffic lights work right at that location. Yeah, I, I, don't I have think to that's... tell you that I've also had people tell me that they don't like going out and around by the post office because they've got people coming in from Brook Street and from Bethel Mountain Road and coming back around from the post office. and, and you got They don't like the stop signs is what they don't like. They don't even stop they down don't stop. I know. No. I know. I mean, Nobody but uses a stop sign. Right. I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. I've always thought that Park Street, going by Nancy's house and around the park, should be one way, too, so we could add more parking and people would not park on the park. But... You know, that's a zoning issue, too, and so you have to change all that, and that would all be one way, but okay, you aren't so going to get Can I put some signs up in my yard, and can I tell the Jensen's they could put some up in their yard? You like, can, what, you, like what kind of signs? Please drive slowly. Please drive Pets slowly. Children in the road. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course you can. Yeah. I okay. think there are state rules about whether you can, mm -hmm. you can just randomly put drive slowly kids ahead and those things. Not on your own property. Well, it, But it's not you, your own property because of the you, town's right of way. If you post a sign that says uh, a certain amount of speed limit, if you say, please drive 25 miles an hour, you put the road in a situation where they could drive 50 to 100 miles an hour because you, you it's not a, an ordinance that you're following it's just somebody's that's why we've had issues with people that have spray painted signs in the hollows where it says 30 miles an hour or 35 and made it 80 <coughs> you know that it what it does is it puts the it you can't it nullifies the, the ordinance yeah. and then you can't enforce it. it so yeah. you know we have issues like that and i don't know 
how you address those things. I really don't. Hmm? Uh, one potential suggestion is to look to see how other communities have dealt with it. For an example, Waterbury, their uh, town park has a one-way traffic around the mm -hmm. Right. Site. Yeah. Oh, I've right. always thought that this should yeah. be that that way too. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't think that it's worth trying if, if it's put to the town and there's agreement? Um, I haven't really looked into what it would do or how it would be. I mean, I'd love to do do it and add parking because it would add more parking to the mm -hmm. town. No question about it. But I haven't really you know, looked into it. I've had too many other things going on, too. Is there something I can do to facilitate it? Any kind of uh, research or phone call? I'm not or? sure. And there may be some zoning issue with that, too. I don't know. But it is a road issue. Well, I do perhaps there could be some kind of study, like if we did a temporary, I can ask. you know, signs to block that, say no entry one way. At the front, I mean, and, more signs. But and I can I, research so it a little bit, too. Apparently, right now, the GPS is bringing people from the, coming from the south. Right. They're turning them onto Park Row. Right. And yep. they're going up here and across to go to Bethel Mountain. They're all driving 40 and 50 miles an hour mm -hmm. around the by park. our house. Yeah. Yep. I can't believe they do that there and not here at School Street. Well, they're doing it over well, there. The they, they don't it's do it around in, here on School Street so much. 100, especially people that are in a hurry to an appointment or getting late um. to work, I can promise you that there are people. It doesn't take more than one. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not an alarmist. I just, it's my front yard. We mm -hmm. see it too. You yeah. know, like you can watch it out the window. It's just ridiculous. Some of it is very it's, it's fast. It's much worse than you like, realize. Because yeah. you don't <coughs> live here. Probably could close the here. street right down. Right. Um, except, yeah. Yeah, except for people who Mar live there. Mar Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about one way, did I misunderstand you? It sounded like you were saying that entering off of Main Street onto School Street wasn't going to be. That's what, that's what we were I talking think about. That's the, the, yeah, that's, that's what the we were safer way, about. in my opinion. Yeah. So, you know, remember. Okay, because coming out. Yeah. The uh, one we were doing the construction on Bethel Mountain Road and there was so much traffic on Brook Street, we had those temporary right. speed bumps that we put in there, which um, would not cut it in the winter with the plowing, but in the summer, there's no reason that we couldn't um, lay a couple of sleeping policemen, as I used to call them, in, in the middle of the road. Never heard that yeah. Yeah. I actually suggested that sometime in the last couple of years that we put spikes kind of on. speed put bumps there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, just, I can understand. I agree with Susie that, that oh, sorry. Go ahead. That leaving School Street to go on to Main Street can be really dangerous. I can see why you'd want to make it one way or the other way, but entering School Street from Main Street seems fine to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a safe way to go in there, Martha. But to to make because it a one way I go street, to, um... the signage would be pretty obtrusive to everybody, yeah. you know. I mean, you'd right, have a big exactly. sign. Exactly. It would be hard on, to hard right to notice. Right there by Sue's notice. house and on the other side of the street, I think you have to sign it both both sides of the road, I believe. But I'll talk to uh, Rita at Two Rivers and figure mm -hmm. out, you know, what's it entails to change a road from a, a two-lane highway to a one-way road. So do I? Um, there's rules on it. I don't know what they are. So we would have to, you know, go through all that process. And I'm not sure what that process is, to be honest with you. Okay, well, in, in the interim, I can put a couple of, some, one or two signs up just yeah, telling people, people that telling people that there are people put it on, on, on your <laughs> put it on your porch or something on the on your pole well, just right in front. You know, I mean, where they put the political signs every year. But it's in the town right of way. It's in the town right of way. Yeah. Well, the town right of way probably goes right up on my porch. on your porch. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So. That's what I was saying. Maybe put them on your <laughs> porch post or something. House, we're all we, <laughs> all yeah. we know. <laughs> Don't know. Oh, I, I would think it'd be. <laughs> so did we borrow the speed bumps or where did we get those? I don't know. Where I think Cooter got them. Yeah. Well, they might still be we, kicking around I think we somewhere. We still have them, but I don't know. I mean, I'll ask John about it. Yeah, I can ask I mean, John that about would, it. That would probably, 
you know, people can ignore a sign, but when they fly over a speed bump mm-hmm. at 30 miles an hour, they can't ignore that, that only as takes much. Months. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, if it's out here, it's not going to be obtrusive to anybody yeah, anyway, yeah. really. Well, it's no put it up there, too. Yeah, put one on each end mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah I can talk if to we already about have them. See. Yeah. yeah. You know, if we've got them, I don't know why it w- we couldn't do it. Yeah. But I really would like to see this a one way because I just worry about somebody getting clocked over there by the yeah. hardware. I mean, I, I totally get that. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, that when I went to school here and uh, we used to go down and walk down to lunch there, one of the kids was always pretty brave and he rode his bicycle in the snow. And I remember him whipping out across the hardware there, and he slid right out into the middle of the road, and his bicycle got run over by the car. I'll never forget that. I can still see it. But there weren't as many cars in those years. No, no, there wasn't. And there was all kinds of kids. (laughs) Not a lot of great big trucks. No. No, it's, the, the, it certainly is different. In the hardware, those big trucks usually go to service the hardware, so, you know, they the 18 wheelers. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And then they leave this way. Because yeah, that's the only way no, they can go. No, they come in this way and they do a three point turn in the parking lot and they go back out that way. Well, some of them do. Oh, sometimes. Not the big box not, trucks, but not the 18 So, um, back so to the River. topic of. of cars parking in the street for the restaurant or the hardware, especially for the restaurant, I would think maybe it's usually they... usually for the hardware. Usually for the hardware? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the restaurant people park down here. For yeah, the I, was, I would say it's kind of you obvious know. that there's a you place know, to get off the street. There's often pickup trucks on Route 100. But now that they've got all their, you go around the their little signs out front saying laundry and hardware parking only. Yeah, that's... Um, well, that, and that's in part they're trying to deal with their tenants not having parking. But right. That's, that, that's, that's a different issue. Yeah, it's a completely yeah. different issue. Yeah. Right. You know, but, you know, <clears throat> if you're coming north and you take a turn around a pickup to come onto School Street, and when you get around there, there's a pickup parked on the side yeah. of the street, and there's a car coming this You better way. be driving slow. So, actually, those cars that's are all. helping to slow down the traffic, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, well, that sounds, um, the speed bumps sounds like an absolutely wonderful yeah. start. Yeah, I think it would I be. I appreciate that. Especially if we already have them in inventory. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you for yeah. keeping your eyes open and letting us know what you see. Well, I appreciate it. And, yeah. and if you don't have them um, and there's no funds, let me know and I'll do a fundraiser. Okay. I mean, I will do anything I can to have to stop thinking about this. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone on Zoom from the library tonight? No, no, nope. there's not. How about um, we've done with the mowing? Just one thing with the uh, library. Yep. Uh, bread loaf construction is supposed to be coming over at some point to, to rip it. off some boards mm-hmm. there so we Stick can look at that. it to see what that's going to entail on repairing that. And that contract that we signed with them is is over at the end of the month so i gotta call them and see if they're um, gonna be getting gonna do honor it. that or not so uh, so in terms of the highway the mowing is done the mowing's done they've been graveling and ditching up 73 somewhere i haven't seen john to talk to him actually but that's what they've been up to and um, they're back on uh, five days now, too. Yeah. They went back on the f- five-day week. Is Terry online there? No. Nope. nope. Jeff, um, I know you're online because we already heard from you. Have you got anything else you'd like to contribute? Uh, I'm afraid I need to contribute, but I'm not so much liking this one. Um, oh, okay. Um, I'm afraid. Um, we have uh, received from the state some time ago uh, a grant for level two energy audits of the town office and the uh, town garage. Um, mm-hmm. When I returned from vacation a week or so ago, I uh, got in touch with uh, Harry Falconer again at uh, uh, Torque. Um, and he replied uh, today, I believe it was. 
that I, oh, the, the other thing I was looking for is one, you know, where are the auditors? We've been promised them since July. And secondly, I'm aware that uh, the um, implementation grants are now open. So Harry's reply is, yes, implementation grants have opened. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but the commissioner of buildings, grounds, and, and services uh, recently sent out a statement that only towns that have been designated high energy burden by the 2019 Efficiency Vermont report will be eligible to apply for implementation funds. Unfortunately, this does not include Rochester. Um, I'm not sure what this next sentence means. The clock is ticking on getting these funds obligated by the end of the year. And they decided that they needed to narrow the el eligibility criteria to achieve that. Seems like if you're looking for more projects, you don't cut back. But uh, that being said, they are still going to honor the audits that we've been awarded um, and just today, he's been uh, starting to hear from vendors about getting the final scheduled, uh, the final to be scheduled audits lined up. And he hopes he has more soon. So we uh, will have the ability to find out what we need to do, but we will not have any shot at the money to do it. At least not on this cycle. Will this be a recurring cycle, do you think, for the implementation? Um, that was not addressed at all in his uh, comment, um, and it is a new thing. It was not the way it uh, was initially when they set up the uh, Municipal Energy uh, Resiliency yeah. Program. Hmm, so we're not a high energy burden town. Huh? Mm. Um, nope. No. Okay. Well, um, nope. thanks for the update. Thanks for trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll keep my nose to the grindstone, or well, the audits will be good. At least we'll kind of know where we want to go next, and and um, maybe we'll be learn how we can um present as a high energy burden. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if we have electric mowers, it'll it'll require more energy. Qualify. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, thanks, Jeff. Um. Kristen, any grant updates? No, not this week. Got property tax updates, so yeah. You yep, got that's been that. my life lately, so. Yep. yep. Now that that's over, maybe I can think about something else. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any old business that you um, comes up? Everybody looks to be happy on Zoom. Okay, well, um, I would like to... Um, Thank everyone for coming, and I guess we're going to um, have a brief executive session after the meeting to talk about an employee issue. You know what that's I about? Yeah, I think you were, but I think that's been canceled. That's been canceled. The okay. That wanted to do it isn't here, so All right. I'll reach right. out to okay. them and get back to you. All right. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to do that, Mason. Uh, quick question about: uh, Will there be another? Public meeting related to the school. Yes, vote. there will. October Is that the last one? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. October. It'll be uh, Tuesday, October 29th. I'm sorry. Tuesday, October 29th. 29th. October 29th. Yep. And is a location been picked? No. I would like to resuggest what I had suggested once before. Is. Uh, Look at Pierce Hall for that meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. May I ask why, Mason? I'm just curious. To, to give the voters the opportunity to see other locations within the town. All right. Well, um, with that, I would um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, Thank guys. you.